the text for the, uh, the sermon this morning is the Old Testament reading in Deuteronomy 5. Uh, just uh, uh, verse 15 again, or part of it really. You shall remember that you are a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out from there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. This is our text. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almost hate to recall this for you, but some years ago, uh, you were encouraged, politically speaking, to uh, support health care for everybody, universal health care. And, uh, and, and I, you know, I remember um, being encouraged by other Christian people to think of that charitably and you know whether you liked it or didn't like it doesn't really matter but I what I was thinking at the time and it made me think about it again today is whether it's really charity if it's law if it's taxed if it's penalized if you don't do it if it's mandatory is it really charity or something like that that's you know then and uh, made me think of that when I see this commandment in place uh, we'll see if I can make that uh, be sensible for you. So we're looking at one of the Ten Commandments here. Uh, the, the one that sets the Sabbath rest in place for the Hebrew people. Uh, this is the second time they've heard it. I, I don't know if you realize that or not, but uh, they, uh, they, they stand at the edge of the Jordan River about to enter into uh, Canaan. The, the land that God promised Abraham a long, long time before. And so uh, they heard it the first time when they stood at Mount Sinai uh, and uh, God Almighty uh, sent the, the commandments, the covenant down the mountain with Moses. And they heard it there the first time and here again. So they stand at the edge of the Jordan River and they're about to enter, finally, after all these years. It's been 40 years since they were at Sinai. Uh, and so Moses uh, brings out the form of this covenant with God again. Now that they've come to trust God some, because it took them a while to... They didn't really uh, trust God too much at the beginning of this, because they kind of refused to go to Canaan. Uh, they, they thought it was too scary, so he gave them 40 years to think about it. So now, theoretically, they trust God's promises a little better and, uh, and are ready to go in, and they're going to come across the Jordan River to do that. So they heard the, uh, the covenant of Moses again. So now that you've heard it again, because this is not your first time hearing it either, I ask how you're doing on this. Uh, we all have had reasons for skipping church on occasion. I think you will admit that that's so. Most of the time, I would suppose, you thought it was important enough to do that. Uh, the question is, is that okay? Um, is it okay when you have on other days uh, that this commandment directs for you to pay attention to if you went to work? Because it says don't work. Uh, can you tell if... Uh, that kind of work counts. And because, and, you know, apparently some kind of work does and some kind of work doesn't, uh, according to their traditions at the time, and that's very confusing. Uh, Luther even discussed this commandment when he said, you know, if, you're, if you even just despise the word of God, the, the scriptures, if you, if you take them lightly, if you pay, don't. Has anybody here ever kind of not heard the sermon? I mean, I, yeah, I know. Uh, this, this is just the way human beings are. We have trouble. So what about yard work or feeding the kids or changing a diaper or, or getting someone else to do stuff for you on a Sabbath day? Uh, does that count? Can you even really know, uh, even guess how often you've blown this one <laughs> uh, on the, uh, the many... Uh, Ten Commandments that this, you know, maybe sky high blown in front of God. 
I, I, I would be betting if you're like me, you probably don't have a good handle on how many times you've blown that. Now, the people that heard this from Moses were free from Egypt. God had rescued them from Egypt. They had been in slavery there, and they were out in the wilderness for 40 years, and, and, uh, and this is their history so far with God. So no slavery anymore. That's a good thing. Uh, Jews, for a very long time, even still to this day, consider this commandment to be binding unto judgment. If you don't do it right, then God's going to get mad. I, I think that's the way they take it. Now, uh, God actually had to tell them. This, I always find that kind of weird. Usually, you know, commandments are designed in Scripture to tell you to either do something that you don't want to do or not do something that you do want to do uh, because it really doesn't make any sense to tell people to do stuff they already wanted to do anyway. So mostly God doesn't do that. But in this particular case, God actually had to tell them to rest from their labors, which I find kind of strange because it doesn't take anything to get me to go to sleep. Uh, it uh, almost doesn't matter at all when or how. Uh, but he, he wants to give them rest for their own Slaves even, uh, which is an irony if you think about it, because they were rescued out of slavery, and this is reminding them that they were rescued out of slavery, and, uh, and they have slaves, which is odd. But God says it here to remind them of their own bondage in Egypt. That's what he says here. Uh, of course, they remember that, because you know being in bondage is kind of troubling, and it wasn't that far in their past. But they always forget how they were given that rest. God is the one that rescued them out of Egypt. God is the one that made that happen. God is the one that brought them out of slavery. And sometimes they don't remember that. So he gives them this to pay attention to it. Remember. This Sabbath rest is about a lot of things. But it is very precisely not having any burden of work for that special day. It's not supposed to work because it's supposed to be rest. Uh, and we can't even do that right. But it's not supposed to be a, a deadly burden that condemns you forever because you don't quite get the achievement for the day quite right. If you don't do it quite properly, if you don't rest the way you're supposed to, it's not about burdens there. And what Christ did for you, uh, and, and this just brings it all the way forward, there is rest. Rest from bondage to sin in the forgiveness that he brought. Rest from bondage to death, because if there's no sin, there's no wages of sin. And that means that there is also no death. Although your body may die, your uh, rest is eternal. Christ has provided you a time when you will be with him temporarily in spirit only. And then one of these days when Jesus returns, uh, as we spoke of in the creed that we, we laid out a bit ago, then you will be raised, made whole, made completely human. And that's your eternity. Death would be no more. No more bondage of any sort. All of which is fulfilled for your eternal rest in the blood and the death sacrifice of Jesus, the son of the living God. This is not just for a weekly day of rest, but for you, it is an eternity of release. It is an eternity of freedom from what holds every human being. Again, I say, sin is completely gone for you. Death is entirely overcome. Accusation of any sort is utterly impossible because Christ has declared you free. He has said you're, you're no longer concerned with your sin, even though, you know, he says, pay attention to that. But it is not binding unto death anymore. So we're free to live in Christ, free to live in grace, free to live in holiness, free to live even in service to your God because you want to. Free. 
gift of God. There lies your rest. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but this commandment talks about Sabbath being on the seventh day. And here we sit on the first day of the week, <laughs> which, you know, might seem a little peculiar. Uh, you're sort of celebrating your Sabbath on a different day rather than what the commandment says. If you were to go look at some other places in Scripture, I think especially Romans 14 addresses this, you're free to celebrate the Lord's Day, which is a little bit different, for your rest. The Lord's Day being the day of the celebration of resurrection, which has become the customary celebration of Gentiles. The Jews still hold to the Sabbath day because it was commanded for them and it's part of their tradition, but it is not part of ours. If you wanted to, you could worship on Saturday. If you wanted to, you could worship on Tuesday afternoon. I guess the Romans 14 says to pick a day, do it together, do it to your Lord, and that is a celebration worth having. Because in the Lord's day is your rest. The fact that he rose from the dead, the fact that he died for you in the first place, the fact that he rose from the dead, that great miracle of destiny for him and forgiveness for you is your rest, forgiveness. Your sacraments are there as well on this day. All of this because in the rest that he's given you, which is not only today, but eternal in Christ. These things have been paid for. They've been bought for you as you were bought out of sin and death. You are free in Christ, free before God, free. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.